Hmm, I really do need a new video idea. I wonder what the FNAF community has been up to as of late. Oh, yeah, this is big rain time. So, it goes without saying that today's video has been inspired by a similar one that Aya made. I've linked the original video in the description in case anyone wants to check it out. Five Nights at Freddy's as a franchise has become almost synonymous with the brand of the game theorists. Whether you're a new fan or not, and whether you agree with MatPat's conclusions or not, it's no secret that all the various theory videos put out by him and his team throughout the years have not only grown the FNAF community, but even kept it together at times in the Lord just felt too convoluted. As such, it takes a highly disciplined level of work, talent, and dedication to have had such an impact on one of the most widespread communities on the internet. It is by no means that luck was what brought the tourist team to where they are today. Being the analytical expert he is, MatPat knows how to bring in newer subscribers while keeping his current viewers engaged. A lot of this has to do with their high quality thumbnails, but even titans have their weaknesses. Join Join me today as we rank all the various thumbnails that we have been greeted with ever since the first theory graced the internet all the way back in 2014. Now there are some rules before we begin this journey. Rule number one, the thumbnails must originate from the videos in the official Game Theory FNAF playlist. Rule number two, the thumbnail must be a theory that MatPat discusses. This disqualifies any live streams, couch talks, and partner shows. Rule number three, the collection of qualified thumbnails will be divided into five segments. We'll begin with the first set being called the PSL era, which will be followed by the PPS era, hehe <laughs> PP and PHW era respectively. We'll then end off with the Golden and Glamrock era. If you're confused about what all these names mean, don't worry, it'll become self-explanatory as the video progresses. The thumbnails will be ranked in chronological order, which becomes difficult when you realize just how disorganized the official playlist is. Thanks, MatPat. Starting off, this might come as a surprise to many Game Theory fans, but I personally think that their first ever FNAF thumbnail is just simply hot ass. Now, before you charge at me with pitchforks at the ready, hear me out. The text just fills up too much of the screen and is so redundant. Something like the truth of FNAF or even the truth would have done a much better job at attracting viewers, providing proper context and being clear while also fitting the composition much better. On top of that, the image used of Freddy is a saturated ray screen render of him from the original game. It's zoomed in unnecessarily and just feels incredibly claustrophobic. However, I will be lenient on the basis that this was the first ever FNAF theory and due to how MatPat was pretty much running the channel by himself at that point. Well, aside from Steph of course. And with that, I'd say C is a fitting tier. This is arguably worse than the first one. The proportions of the text are all off and it makes me want to puke. The cutout of Golden Freddy is extremely extremely choppy and I'm sorry but the grey rectangle behind it is just such an oversight. It would have taken a minute to remove it. Also, similar to the last thumbnail, Golden Freddy feels too close for comfort. But again, MatPat was still laying the groundwork for his channel at this time and so it goes into a low C. There are definitely some improvements here. For one, the text is spaced out much more efficiently. The cutout of Springtrap is surprisingly well done and the glow behind it doesn't do much but it lets me know that the there was at least some ounce of effort put into this thumbnail. It's not perfect, but it's a substantial increase in quality from the last two. This is a high C for sure. What even is this? What am I looking at? That image of Bonnie is of such low quality and it looks as though it got suppressed at least a hundred times. This goes without even mentioning how bad the cutout itself is. And the placement of everything is just such a mess. There's so much dead space in the most random of places and I don't even know what's going on with that text. There's no redemption for this thumbnail. It's going in F, straight up. I can see the vision for what they were going for with this one. The text is better although the scaling is still a bit off. Alongside this, there still is a lot of dead space present and honestly, I feel like MatPat or his editors could have been a lot more creative with how they portrayed Purple Guy. I mean, just using the default sprite, really? But I can't fault them for the simplicity. The context is clear and gets the message across. Overall, a C again. Just a nitpick of mine but I think it would have been extremely cool if the text here was slightly slanted to match the positioning of the doorframe. 
it would have just added that extra level of pizzazz, you know? And the underlying text is kind of odd. Regardless, this thumbnail is a massive step up from everything shown prior. It's good to see game theory start breaking away from the trend of merely placing a character close up in a dark void. Nightmare Fredbear looks especially superb here and the editing done on him is eye-catching while not overexposed. The text does bring it down though, so it's going in B. There's a lot of dead space in this one, but in light of the context of the video and the message that MatPat wanted to showcase, I think the minimalistic approach is forgivable albeit the end result is quite bland. Also, try and count how many thumbnails going forward try and frame a video as the finale of FNAF. Should be a fun game. To conclude, the box is always a great way to catch someone's attention and it's nice to see how the text is getting consistent in quality. This thumbnail earns itself a B. Uh, scratch whatever I said about the text in these thumbnails improving. This is just irritating to see. The unalignment is abhorrently noticeable and the underlining is back for some reason. Aside from that though, Pony does look fantastic. I like how the red arrow dates this video as it's obvious this was during the time when YouTubers would point toward absolutely anything and everything and that would be a surefire way of making your video go viral. Despite how awful of a trend that was though, this thumbnail does it well. It piques your curiosity as to what may be hiding in the shadows. In fairness of the era this thumbnail was spawned in, a B it is. And that's a wrap on our first set of thumbnails. The two following parts represent different eras of when MatPat fully believed he'd slowly work towards solving the FNAF timeline once and for all. Oh, if only he knew how his madness hadn't even reached the tip of the iceberg by the time Sister Location rolled around. Let's recount his spiral, shall we? For the first analysis of Sister Location, the thumbnail sure is trash. The lighting and styles of Circus Baby and the puppet are too contrasting in the worst of ways. The text is a mountain's height apart and once again, the puppet and baby have no business being that scaled up. Honestly, I expected better from the team by this point, so this thumbnail is the first resident of the D tier. In theory, this could have been one of the most memorable thumbnails out of the lot. However, everything is just off. Why is baby not in the center? Why is the text all over the place? The editing is cool and I even like the blood that complements the lurking purple guy in the back but the composition is so god awful that this is just another D. Now here is a thumbnail that could have really benefited from that purple guy idea from earlier. Having a second character fill up that dead space would have been such an easy thing to do and it would have looked cool too. And to address the elephant in the room, what the hell is up with Erd? Why is he rocking that giga animatronic chin? and his eyes are just... Uh, oh. Yeah, FDR. This thumbnail was such an oddity among my collection of JPEGs that I had to bring my friend on board to help me decide which rank this should lay in. Apparently, she thought this should go straight into F tier while I was opposing for S. That was for good reason. The text fits the composition and adds a lot of depth by being placed behind Golden Freddy. Moreover, the child and the hand take up just the right amount of space needed. Sure, a few of Golden Freddy's teeth are improperly masked and the thumb is fading out for no reason. Reason, but I still liked it. My friend countered by stating how it was just extremely goofy when compared to everything else and didn't fit the vibe. I'm sure this will ignite a war in the comments but to balance the good and the bad, I'm putting this in B so that everyone's happy. This thumbnail harkens back to the aforementioned one that featured Nightmare Bonnie. All in all, I think this is just a new and refined version of the old thumbnail that hits all the beats that its inferior counterpart missed. The glow inside Funtime Freddy's stomach is eye-catching while the arrow is surprisingly pertinent to what is discussed in the video, that being the hallucinatory disc that MatPat brought up for the first time. Given that information, I'd say Bonbon's reaction is quite appropriate. This is no doubt A tier worthy. It's clean, gets a job done and showcases the context of the video quite efficiently. The abundance of dead space is excusable given the finality of what this video was aiming for. Plus, thumbnails like these just go to show how well yellow characters stand out. I'm ranking this a low A, but believe me when I say that this thumbnail would have looked like garbage if any other animatronic other than Golden Freddy was put under that spotlight. For what was supposed to be the fourth final timeline on the series, this is super underwhelming. People were waiting for this video to release with bated breath and hell, it even featured Kellen Goff. 
one time Freddy's voice actor. All that build up for the video's thumbnail to be a professional looking rehash of the first FNAF thumbnail, which was already such a travesty, is such a waste. C tier. With another set done, I think it's worth noting that the thumbnails get scarily good from this point onward. And for that reason, points will be docked off more easily to avoid the S tier being filled to the brim. Oh, and my friend from before will be helping me rank these since boy does it get difficult at some points. Starting off, we have what I'd like to argue is one of the most iconic Game Theory FNAF thumbnails of all time. This was released when Pizzeria Simulator was fresh off the stove. The hype was real especially since the series had seemingly concluded. And given the context of the video this thumbnail represents, I have no complaints. I know I trashed the original sister location thumbnail for having clashing styles, but that same criticism isn't warranted here. Susie and Helpy are supposed to look different given how one of them is from a minigame while the other is a 3D model. On top of that, I think the differences between the two actually benefit the thumbnail since it separates Helpy's goofy vibe from the absolute terror edited onto Susie. For all these reasons, Reasons, this is a clear S tier, and that goes without even mentioning the beauty of the text. This is simply an upgraded version of the original open and unlatched box concept. Helpy stands out extraordinarily well in these thumbnails. I imagine it's because of his white paint and gloss finish, which is an element that also aided Funtime Freddy in his debut thumbnail. Honestly, this makes me wish MatPat included more of the Funtime animatronics in his sister location videos, but oh well, S tier. I literally have no complaints. The idea of the Polaroid is commend worthy and fits in well with what the video is about. Also, Helpy and Golden Freddy, immediate S tier. Similar to the previous thumbnail, the idea for this was executed to perfection. Also, Helpy, Golden Freddy, and Purple Guy, the trifecta of FNAF thumbnail icons, another S tier. Again, flawless from the inception to the finished product, and given the reference to Pizzeria Simulator's ending, this goes hard. S tier. The inclusion of all the past games could have made for another S tier, but the implementation is lacking. I have no complaints toward the quality or composition, but this one falls off a bit when compared to the previous ones. I will admit though, the purple hat is a nice touch and stops it from being too obscure. A tier. This thumbnail right here possesses such a universally high S ranking that seeing an artsy TikTok of it was what single-handedly convinced me to make this video. It would have been nice if the purple hat made a return, but that doesn't dock off any points in my book. Legendary thumbnail. Now, you might be wondering what the last two eras are categorized by. Well, since MatPat started releasing way more theories that were based on the books, I couldn't mark them by what game they preceded. So the Golden Era and Glam Rock Era are just that. The era in which MatPat used the most of either Golden Freddy or Glam Rock Freddy. With that cleared up, let's begin. This thumbnail is quite bland, but so was the theory that this is associated with since MatPat didn't have a lot to go off of when the help wanted teasers initially started rolling out. Leaves a lot to be desired. B tier. The blood here looks noticeably out of place. Plus, this one screenshot was plastered over every help wanted video for a month, so this is going straight into B tier, albeit a high one. And before you use the excuse that there was no other glitch trap render to use, well, explain this then. Golden Freddy and Glitch Trap are incorporated seamlessly, although the disproportionate text is the only thing holding this back from an S tier. So it'll be going into a tier below, but it's a high A at that. This one checks all the boxes for an S tier thumbnail. I literally have no complaints or any suggestions of my own to give. However, it just feels off. Inauthentic would be the proper word. Something about it just feels very disorienting and it doesn't fit in with the rest. I can't explain it but my friend agreed with me and so we decided that this is another high A tier. Feel free to let me know what you guys think in the comments below since this is a peculiar matter. And hey, be sure to subscribe while you're at it too. This is the first thumbnail that I've seen that makes Dead Space look intentional to the point that its inclusion, or rather lack thereof, actually heightens the quality of the thumbnail. The way Glitchtrap and his followers are fading into the dark is what allows this effect to be created. Plus, it's all simply relevant to the theory discussed in the video, S tier. Upon first glance, you think this is another S tier, but zoom in and you start to see just how apparent the flaws are. Golden Freddy's body is just a yellow blob while the rest of him is very awkwardly placed and masked. However, since that's only a small portion of the thumbnail, it gets an A. See, Golden Freddy looks much better here and his render is quite well placed with some adequate depth given to his threatening stature. S tier. The dead space wouldn't be as distracting if Golden Freddy was fading into the right side of the thumbnail as opposed to the left. 
The presence of headroom makes everything look unbalanced and the exposed brain isn't fated well with its environment. And to be honest, it's weirdly placed. C tier. Another example of dead space done well. Although Golden Freddy's hand is a different texture than the rest of the animatronic, it gets into S tier but by just a hair. No complaints whatsoever, but this is clearly just a poor man's version of the initial graveyard centric thumbnail. And as we'll see later on, it's possible for the theorists to incorporate an old idea like this but add a new twist. So on that note, A tier. Our first example of how too much can be of great detriment to a design. They tried to make NR look scary but ended up ruining him. Logically, the structure of his face doesn't make sense since his facial support has been removed in some areas while remaining untouched in others. Seriously, what was Team Theorist thinking with this one? It's a B. Not as memorable due to the simplicity, but it is still straight to the point and sticks to what works. A tier. Everything about this from the illuminating spotlight that engages with the text all the way to how the two Freddies portray an appropriate emotion that is indicative of their respective host just tickles my thumbnail bone. S tier for sure. Yet another victim of overdesign. There's just too much going on here and I'm surprised this sensory overloaded debacle didn't go through a few more iterations before it was finalized. Something like having only two of the TV screens switched on would have worked way better. B tier. It's an S, don't get me wrong, but it's a low S since it isn't as iconic as the rest. This is a breath of fresh air while still managing to be a banger thumbnail despite not featuring any of the titular roster of click painted animatronics. S tier. Remember that zombie Freddy thumbnail from before? Well, this is what I meant when I mentioned how Team Theorist knows how to rework an existing idea and mold it into something new. Everything about this is perfect. A high S tier. I am not one to normally get hung up on the lore side of things when it comes to the FNAF games. However, I do have to admit that the video associated with this thumbnail is actually one of my most favorite and beloved entries in the long catalog of MatPat's FNAF videos. As for the JPEG itself, I just really like how they utilize Toy Chica here. The yellow glossy look almost makes her stand out more than Golden Freddy. This is definitely another S tier addition. That was definitely the longest collection of thumbnails in a set. Similarly, it also had a lot of variety to offer. I've seen a few individuals complain about how the constant reuse of Golden Freddy is lazy and annoying. But honestly, I think game theory does it well. The renders are the same, but the editing and creativity is what keeps it all intriguing. It reminds me of this row of thumbnails that PewDiePie had put up when he was on vacation. It goes to show how you can reuse assets to still make some great stuff. Let's see how Shifting the Tide worked out for MatPat after he started in Incorporating Glamrock Freddy. The attention to detail is admirable while the editing done to Glamrock Freddy's head really succeeds in making his color scheme pop. You guys already know it, but this deserves an S tier for how they made an adequate thumbnail that was both unique and interesting. Y'all are gonna have to let me cook because I have a lot to say about these next four thumbnails. At first, one might initially be led to believe that the standard game theory formula has been applied to each thumbnail. And they'd be correct. None of them have any flaws when it comes to the way that they are compiled and it's clear how they tick all the necessary boxes that form a good thumbnail. However, good doesn't mean great. There just isn't anything riveting about this collection of pictures that would make me want to click on them. In fact, they all just kind of blend together and any casual viewer's eye would scroll right past it on the homepage of YouTube. In some cases, Glamrock Freddy's goofiness just detracts from the overall quality. If the proportions were intentionally exaggerated such as Bon Bon, then maybe a different vibe would emanate from these pieces. But sadly, these thumbnails are just trying way too hard and failing at it. All that to say that these are all lining up on the high end of B tier. They still do their job well, but this is more of what you'd expect from any old game theory video. You know what they say, old is gold. That couldn't be truer in the case of Golden Freddy. It's nothing revolutionary, but it still meets the entry requirements needed to go into A tier. What the hell did they do to Circus Baby? The left side of her face is blending in with the background while the right side seems AI generated due to the weird ass artifacting. And why does it look like she's missing one of her arms? This is going into B tier, but barely. Let it be known that Glamrock Freddy is hard carrying in this one. It's alright, I mean the blue arrows are a mismatch and nothing is especially striking to me. B tier. And with that, we approach the final four thumbnails. If you didn't know, MatPat tried once again to put the timeline of FNAF together in a four-parter series. While his findings were met with a mixed reception, the theorist team went hard when crafting the thumbnails. I mean just look at this, they're so good when compared to the rest that I, 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 I'm making a whole S tier just for them. And I better not hear any objections in the comments below because I swear to god this is art and if you don't agree-
Yup, here's my official attempt at trying to rank all the Game Theory FNAF thumbnails. I've left a link below that allows you all to participate. Did you agree or disagree? Well, tweet at me and let me know your thoughts. Looking at the final listings, you can see a trend of how Dead Space used to be Game Theory's issue back in the early days whereas now they struggle with just adding too much for the AI to process. Oh, and let it be known that MatPat should never try and make a thumbnail using a close-up. Just don't. And lastly, I think MatPat should do everyone a favor and replace this thumbnail instantly. Like, what even is this abomination? Take this as my friend and I's application to join the team, and take care. If you enjoyed this video, I have a feeling you want to consume more YouTuber content. Well, don't fret. Here's another video right here personalized just for you. So give it a watch, why don't you? Something tells me you won't be disappointed. Until next time though, this has been Vexerus, and see ya.